Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you in this uh, meetup. I'm Simon Kaplan. I'm the CEO of the Urban Institute, and I'm going to talk to you about how and why we use KX for our smart city projects. Uh, we were founded in 2015. Uh, we're based in Australia. Uh, we have about 20 cities around the world, and our customers are a mixture of cities, utilities, universities, and other organizations that run large-scale built environments um, in order to deliver services to their clients or residents. We use KX because it gives us the most flexible and capable foundation we could imagine for delivering our services to our customers. Uh, it runs everywhere. We tend to use the cloud, but people can run it in their own data centers if they need to. It provides a time series database that can store enormous quantities of data traveling at truly ridiculous velocities. And so we can therefore scale to meet any needs that our clients have. Um, it allows us to ingest data from any sources. Um, including IoT devices over any kind of communications and any legacy systems and store that data into the time series database. It allows us to perform analytics like complex event processing and machine learning on the data. It allows us to deliver enterprise scale capabilities like users and roles um, and geographic precincts. It allows us to build visualizations, to customize the behavior of the system, to implement client workflows, and to have sophisticated monitoring and alerting of what's going on in the system. And it allows us to deliver smart services to our customers, things like um, smart energy management or traffic congestion management or coronavirus hotspot prediction and so on. It has a powerful um, dashboarding capability that we'll demonstrate in a minute and a powerful workbench capability that allows users to um, explore data if they need to. And it has a very rich set of interface mechanisms that allow us to control remote devices, to make data available through portals, um, and to send data to remote systems so that what we build can be completely integrated into an organization's capabilities. Now, let's have a look at some examples of KX in action. KX provides a very rich family of widgets that can be arranged in many different ways, and each widget can be styled. Uh, the look and feel that you see here with a black background and a number of tiles and a map is a common design metaphor that we use because our clients are still learning what sorts of data sets are most useful, and they're still exploring how to best pull them together. This is quite different to, let's say, a financial transactions environment where the data is very well understood and the deep dive is what people are after very quickly. The tiles that we see here show solar energy, environmental data, smart lighting data, smart Wi-Fi data, and so on. These are each a summary of the smart city projects that this council has ongoing. Each tile is also a gateway which allows a deeper dive into the data. Let's look at Wi-Fi, for example. This deeper look allows us to see how the number of clients changes from day to day. We can see the gaps where the Wi-Fi system was offline for a while. We can see in the last 24 hours how the number of clients varied. We can see the locations of each of the Wi-Fi base stations in in the city and we can see the same summary information that was available on the uh, on the earlier dashboard similarly if we drill down into the solar power dashboard we can see the weather at, as it currently is at the solar power weather station we can see how much power it was generated today versus yesterday we can see how many houses that powered um, and we can see the production day by day in the histograms, pretty nice day today and three days ago. But in the meantime, the weather's been fairly average and cloudy, and so the amount of power produced and the amount of sunshine is obviously less. For our second project, let's look at some work we did with the city of Parramatta around 
the impact of large-scale building. The map on the right shows a light industrial estate that's being turned into high-density housing in the city of Parramatta, just west of Sydney. The city wanted to understand the impact of this construction environmentally, uh, focusing on air pollution, noise pollution, and runoff into the Parramatta River. The tiles give us a high-level overview of the status of the building site. We can see, starting from the bottom left, what the heat has been like on the site over the last week. We can see how much noise has been generated, a uh, peak of 94 decibels today. Uh, we can see how much particulate matter has flowed over the site. You can see the spike. That was actually caused by a bushfire over the weekend. And we can see which directions the uh, particulates produced will have gone using the, uh, the wind roses. Stormwater is not currently active, which is why that's grayed out. Um, there hasn't been any rain in the last week, and the two alert tiles on the bottom right tell us that there have been no device alerts. These are devices going offline, and no, and six, sorry, telemetry alerts. These are noise readings above the allowable maximum. There have not been any heat alerts, air quality alerts, or water alerts in, uh, in the last 24 hours, and since the middle of winter in Australia, you wouldn't expect any uh, any heat alerts. This drill down gives us a deeper look at heat information. We've chosen two zones, um, and you can see at a glance that one of these is substantially hotter than the other, uh, with a high of 32 degrees. You can see the comparison against um, data coming from public sources, uh, like Bureau of Meteorology and Willy Weather. It's quite a lot hotter on the building site today. Uh, and in the summer, for example, that might be used to down tools um, or understand the heat island effect of the shift in the kinds of buildings that are available on the site. Um, we can see that there's been a rain. Um, there are no device alerts at the moment. Everything is online. Um, and there are no heat alerts today. Even though it's very hot, it's still within acceptable working conditions. This drill, this drill down gives us an even deeper look at the data. And now we can take uh, individual sensors and plot their data for a fixed period of time to understand how things are different from one part of the site to the other. And what this shows us is that there's quite a significant difference in temperature every day between these two sites. Uh, and that's useful information for the people keeping an eye on the construction. And it tells them where to go looking to dig further into the impact of the construction. Let me end with an example of us using data that was collected for one purpose and then reused for another. This is the Wi-Fi data that you saw at the very beginning of the talk. Uh, those Wi-Fi base stations will actually position every device they see with less than a meter of accuracy. So we could use that information to track coronavirus distancing violations. The green line, num the green bumps here show number of people who are behaving well from a social distancing perspective. The red bumps people who are not. So you can see at a glance that in the period from the beginning of March to the beginning of April, the beginning of that, there were a lot of times when social distancing wasn't really being taken seriously or probably hadn't really penetrated the community yet. But by the time we got to the end of April, you can see we've had a nice drop uh, in the number of people not social distancing properly, and that helped the city to organize its response. We also looked at the data um, on a map from a hotspot point of view. This first clip shows what was happening at the beginning of January. So this is uh, height of summer holidays, and you can see lots and lots of people not social distancing properly as you'd expect, and really big cluster showing up at the airport at the top of the uh, picture every day, and obviously very busy along the, uh, along the beach strips. Jump ahead to the beginning of April, when coronavirus lockdown was in full swing in Australia. You can see clearly now how, although there are still hotspots that needed to be policed, the number of people not uh, doing the right thing had dropped dramatically. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you this afternoon. 
I hope that uh, the rest of the meetup goes uh, successfully, and I look forward to being able to be with you in the future.